Welcome back to the Accelerate Summit. I'm Meg White with Chicago Agent Magazine, and I'm with the Thad Wong, <laughs> co-founder of App Properties. So glad you could join us. Thank you. Thanks for having so me. So glad you could be on that panel. That was such a fun, so many things you guys were d discussing about the disruption issue. So That was a good group. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. As the only owner of a brokerage on that panel, um, how did you feel like uh, everything fit together? What was your role there? You know, I felt like I had a lot of insight. Um, you know, when it comes to home light, a startup which is, you know, another way of commission suppression. Effectively, the agent pays a referral for a lead, whether it's relocation, whether it's buying leads from Zillow, et cetera. It's kind of like in that same model. And that is their entree into the eye buying space and becoming the opportunity to offer agents potentially resources that either their brokerage or their MLS is not providing to be more successful in providing their client a better user experience. It's interesting. I think that. Uh, their cost of customer acquisition is astronomically high and it's going to be very difficult to succeed. We've seen those models. The only model like that to really go has been Zillow and that is because of the Zestimate when the consumer really saw something interesting and they really became the Coca-Cola of real estate and they proved that the consumer would rather search on a, um, a non-brokerage website in order to get their data as long as they knew it was somewhat accurate. And so now that that cat's out of the bag, I think it's hard for other companies like Homelight and others. It's like Angie's List, you know, being able to refer a, a plumber for a referral fee. Similar model. Yeah. Yeah. The idea of them wanting to get on the iBuyer, there are so many iBuyers now, even in there, even though there are not that many markets where it's that, that relevant, there are so many market iBuyers, I feel like it's already saturated and it's yet to even be, do more than a half a percent of closings annually. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, there are so many issues that are labeled as disruptive. I wonder right. if you have one that you think has the most power or potential power to actually disrupt the, the agent from the transaction. Is there one that really sticks out for you? You know, right now, no. And right now, no one's trying to disrupt the agent from the transaction. The iBuyer side uses an agent to sell the property, whether they use a agent from a full service brokerage or they use somebody in their own wheelhouse. There really isn't anything right now. Everything's right now after the commission. How can we take more of the commission? Whether it's giving the agent more commission, whether it is giving commission back to the consumer, whether it's charging less, whether it's recs and not providing a buyer co-op. It all boils down to just commission suppression. How do we squeeze as much or get the agent to pay more for their commission earned? That's all I'm really seeing. I don't see anybody really squeezing the agent out of the equation. And I think the good news on all this stuff is that the agent is now required to provide a significantly better product to the consumer and a better service that it's made all agents more relevant in the transaction. And I think that with all of this disruption, the agents are going to continuously have to provide a better product and a better service every year if they want to maintain the same value, if they want to continue to charge the same commission, they're going to need to every year offer a little bit more. I think in five years, you're going to be surprised what the agent is responsible for providing in a transaction. Well, that's a good, good thing to hear. I feel like um, some, some of the questions I've been asking folks today are um, kind of based around how big of a deal is this? Are we worrying too much or are we not worrying enough about disruption? What's your feeling on that? Uh, I mean, we look at all of it and where we can apply it in our own model, we apply it. But I think disruption is kind of a funny word because Dis thing, companies are called disruptors even though they're not really disrupting anything. You know, they're taking maybe a traditional model and tweaking it a tiny bit and it's a disruptor. I mean, an iBuyer is effectively the same guy who had a sign that says, I buy ugly houses. No different, <laughs> except they have an AVM to help them with their valuation. But in reality, the AVM is nowhere close to as accurate as a well-informed broker on the street. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I'm poo-pooing disruption, but if they asked me a question there on which disruptor I felt like was the most relevant, and I would say it would be the discount brokerage. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, none of those are profitable. But I do think in the next recession, they will generate more relevancy in the transaction because consumers are, because of the power of the internet and power of search and because the data has been relinquished from the brokerage, the consumer feels more empowered mm -hmm. and they oftentimes value the broker's role less. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, I've asked all my questions, but is there anything that you want to say about disruption or where we're headed or anything you heard today that's sticking you know, out? I think the good news is, is that the consumer benefits from everything that we're doing. Um, the bad news is, is that the 
sometimes the agent can get marginalized and their income can get marginalized because there's a lot of people trying to put their hand in the cookie jar. And the industry really, really uh, kind of didn't do itself a favor over the last decade by not creating a national MLS. I mean, had MRED purchased Realtor.com and converted it to a national MLS, the significance of Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and Redfin would have been far less. So that was a big mistake. And so when I look back at that, it's too bad that the industry wouldn't, wasn't able to come together. I think that has a lot more to do with the number of MLSs, et cetera, around the country. But it is forcing us to come together. And it'll be interesting in the next five years um, as the data rolls and is more free, you know, what really shows up is a significant empower of the agent. So the agent can continue to provide the consumer a significant service and improve it year after year. That makes a lot of sense. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us, Dad. No thank you so much for being on our panel and um, just being here at the Accelerate Summit. Really appreciate it. Anytime. Seeing your face here. Thank you. Thank you so much.